By the way, if it's your first time here, subscribe and check out my other content like this video and let's carry on with the video. Hey guys, welcome to another video. As some of you guys may know, of course, the new BMW 4 Series came out. And so I figured, I've sort of scrolled through YouTube and seen a bunch of videos just reviewing the car, getting test drives and all of that, and I figured, why not make a video comparing the BMW 4 Series to other vehicles in the same price range. So, in this video I'm going to be comparing it to the Mercedes C-Class Coupe, and I'm going to be compared to the Audi A5. I'm going to talk about the specs of the vehicles as far as looks, so pretty much essentially from the end of this video, you'll have a better idea which car you'd want to pick as far as performance, which one you'd want to pick as far as economy or getting the best for your buck. So without further ado, let's get to it. So looking at all three vehicles, you can see that they all have a two liter turbo charged inline four cylinder and that's for the very base model. Uh, so generally for the most part, they're all automatic, double dual clutch automatic for the Audi A5 coupe. You have rear wheel drive pretty much for all of them except for the Audi A5 which is all wheel drive. And as far as horsepower, BMW and Mercedes are ahead of the A5 while the torque is highest in the BMW 4 Series Coupe. So I mean pretty much going off of that, I would like to say it's probably neck and neck between the Mercedes and the BMW. So of course the BMW has a lot more torque, but if you're starting from zero, if you're turning on the car and you're just flooring it, you're gonna get that little extra jolt of speed, if you will, um, when you're in the BMW over the Mercedes. But as far as overall performance, I'd probably say it's neck and neck. So in this case, you're best off with the BMW 4 Series or the C Coupe. So as far as the economy of all three vehicles, unfortunately, there's no info for the BMW 4 Series. However, I do know off a quick Google search that you get 23 city and 34 highway. And so in comparison to the Mercedes-Benz and the Audi, you get 22 and 31, and then for the uh, Audi A5, you get 24 and 32. And I feel like sort of just going through this whole chart, you'll pretty much figure out that in most cases, the Audi A5 is the most practical car as far as space. You get a little less power with the A5, but I feel like it's so close where it's almost negligible. If you guys are with me, let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think of the three vehicles? Which one's the best one? Which one's the worst one? Which one do you think you would get if you were in the situation to get one? Uh, let me know again in the comments below. Also, if you made it this far, definitely like the video and also hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification so you can get all my latest videos when they come out. As far as the prices, because I guess that could sort of go into uh, how good of a value you're getting for your vehicle. For the 4 Series Coupe, it's about 46,000. Call it, let's call it 47. For the Mercedes C-Class, it's 47 as well. And for the Audi A5, it's 43. So again, back to my point, Audi A3, you're gonna get, it's gonna be the cheapest. However, you're getting just about this, <clears throat> just about the same amount of performance. It's just a little step below both the BMW and the C-Coupe, but really not that far behind at all. I will say if you're a tall person though, definitely consider looking into the BMW 4 Series because if you look at the rear leg room and trunk volume, granted, I mean trunk volume is trunk volume, but rear leg room if you have a lot of passengers who are tall, like you have tall kids, or you, for whatever reason, ride in the back of your 4 Series, <laughs> um, you definitely want to take that into consideration. Make sure you have enough space for your feet so you're not getting all cramped up because I know as a tall guy myself, things can get pretty rough. I'm still not used to the look of the 4 Series with the huge kidney beans. It's such a it's such a different look than anything I've ever seen ever in my life. I did my research looking into why exactly BMW had the bigger kidney beans more recently, and it turns out, and I believe this is in China, I could be wrong, let me know in the comments below. I do know in China there was a big demand for the vehicles, the, I think it was the 7, the X7. Either way, there was a huge demand for the vehicle and essentially BMW sort of le like leaned into it and decided to just go even bigger with the huge kidney beans. And honestly... I just like the smaller ones, like I like the old school M3s, like the uh, E, I believe it's the E30, E30 and the E46. 
And I sort of just like that, like the traditional BMW look. Granted, I feel like they're doing what sells, so as crazy as it sounds, people are gonna wanna buy the 4 Series, even though it looks like one of those little pigs from Angry Birds, or I think it was the green one, whichever one it was. That's exactly what it looks like, and it's something that I have not gotten used to yet. Um, as somebody who worked at BMW, I actually worked on the X7, and that even in itself took a lot of time to get used to, and I thought those were big, and then seeing the 4 Series now is just, it's like a whole, a whole new level of insanity in my opinion. As far as looks, I would probably go with the, uh, it's a tough one between the Mercedes and the Audi because both are so unique in their own way. On one hand, you have the Mercedes, which is really sleek and like very typical Mercedes Benz, very elegant, sleek. So as far as the A5, it's a lot sportier. It has sharper lines, it has tighter angles, everything is more aggressive looking. And honestly, if someone were to say that you could get either car, um, what I would do <laughs> is I would actually get the Mercedes, sell the Mercedes, and then buy the Audi, and then keep the change. <laughs> the way my head works. But no, if I, had to cho if I had to choose without that crazy scenario, I think it would actually be the Audi A5. Um, there's just a uniqueness to it. And even though I'm not a big Audi guy, I feel like they nailed it with that car. And for the price that you're going to be getting it for, it's pretty solid. So that's that for this video guys, hope you enjoyed it. It was a pretty short one this week, mainly because there wasn't very much going on in the car world as far as I knew. But for now, it's been your boy. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but I actually do know exactly why I said that, because a YouTuber says that. But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll probably be doing a lot more of these in the future. Stay tuned for more content.